Hey guys, what's happening? This just showed up. From the post office. And bought these on eBay. 50 bucks each. Let's see what they are. They're... Oh, God, they're packed, right? Okay. But they're uh, XF, I think it's XFX um, RX 474 gig cards. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why the hell am I buying four gig cards in 2020? Well, it's probably the best value, I think, at 50 bucks a card. Um, and supposedly these, these are already BIOS modded, so a decent BIOS modded card at this year. You know, with this type of memory, the Epauletta memory, should do about 27 mega hash. But then you're thinking maybe, well, Ethereum, the DAG file, is going to go past 4 gig any day now. Well, Ethereum is not the only kind of coin you can mine. You, know, you can mine Ravencoin. Right now I have my old uh, 2 gig uh, NVIDIA GTX 750. That thing's mining uh, Bitcoin gold right now at 6 souls a second. Yeah, but only 50 bucks each, so, like I said, they were already previously a mined card. But, you know, if I can get 27 mega hash out of these things, just even just for a couple months, they'll pay for themselves. Um, you know, once the DAG file goes over 4 gig. But my goal was I was going to do a, a Ethereum Classic. So all my other cards, my RX 580s, 4700 4, or 5700s, I'll, do, I'll do an Ethereum. And I have some other stuff from running, like I said, uh, Bitcoin Gold and doing Monero mining. But uh, let's clean that up. So I'm going to put this in my test rig. And they're identical. Like I said, I, mean, I really still think this is, the, this is the best value for cards. You know? You know, like I said, my. Um, in an earlier video, I showed you my uh, you know, GTX 1660 Super, the NVIDIA. Well, that thing costs 250 bucks, and it only mines 24 to 26 giga or mega hash. And like I said, it costs 250 bucks. Whereas I should be able to get the same or more mega hash for 50 bucks per card, at least until the DAG file runs out. So um, I'm gonna blow them out with my air compressor and get them hooked up to my test bench. And like I said, they're already supposedly BIOS modded, but I don't know what's been done. So I might go back to factory. Uh, VBIOS, you can download from, uh, I think, Tech Power. I've already seen it already, so I've already downloaded the ROM file. So I could go back and restart from scratch the whole, you know, memory modification process, but... Okay, so there is no BIOS switch. Well, some of these do. The the one with the double fan, I think, has the BIOS switch. Six pin power. Um, and like I said, this car is probably about four years old, you know? But still, I mean, the 470 is pretty much uh, exactly the same as a 480, I mean, even like a 570. Just a different, I mean, if I wanted to, I, I could flash a 570 BIOS on this thing. And really, it's not really, it's not necessary because I can I can modify the overclock settings in, in HiveOS anyways, or different OSs. I don't need to do a uh, 570, maybe if I was gaming, you know, but if, if you're mining, I'm trying to lower the power consumption and increase the, the hash rate, so. All right, we'll get this going. Here's the uh, test rig. These are uh, 5700 XTs and they're doing about 53 mega hash right now. I mean, I could go up to 56, but I have them down to 110 watts. So, and this is the uh, GTX 750. And this is still doing six holes and I'm doing Bitcoin, Bitcoin gold with that thing. So, at 30 watts too. So, it's still profitable. You know, it's still making money. That the card I've had forever. So, I'm going to move the cars down and put them there and one of the cool things too is that it still actually has the uh, warranty sticker on there, so um, I might or might not repaste the uh, CPU or the GPU, but we'll see. We'll see how, how it, the temperatures are, and, and my goal is to get these down to about 70 watts. All right, for first fire. So if you actually have this mining rig and you want this power supply adapter, it's on my Thingiverse page. I also made this little switch button here, so let's try that. Oh. There we go. 
All right, booting up the Hive OS. Yeah, I like Hive OS because it's it seems like it gives you the most besides Windows. Windows isn't stable. I don't I don't like mining Windows, but uh, it seems like it has the most options for uh, overclocking and uh, undervolting to get the best hash and uh, you know power consumption. All right, I'm gonna go back into the control panel and we'll see what these things can do. So I have a lot of issues with one of these cards. Um, so I went back into Windows, I'll show you that in a second, but what I noticed is that one is actually a Hynix memory and the other one's Samsung memory, so that's kind of odd, even though they're the same car and they should have actually Epileta. Alright, so the uh, first shot was a no-go. It was locking on my Hive OS and one of the cards wouldn't start in Windows. Plus the one that wouldn't start was getting all hot, like under no load. So um, I can kind of see the video memory a little bit right there. So I'm going to see if I can clean that up with a Q-tip and see if it actually really is the memory it's supposed to be. You know, it's like if it's, like I said, this supposedly has a, a modified firmware on it, so at least in the eBay description. I mean, actually, I am glad it has a copper heat pipe, though. It's an aluminum one. Okay. Okay. All right, so I had to bust out the old uh, Core 2 quad motherboard here, DDR2. It's actually one of the reasons why I keep a lot of old RAM, is I work on servers, and a lot of the servers I work on are just have been running for years. So you can't find the memory anymore. You, you can't go to the store and buy it sometimes. So it's, I like to keep a lot of my old memory around. Um, all right, so I'm gonna fire this up in Hive OS and get this going. Hopefully, you know, I don't think this motherboard is powerful enough to load Windows on there. You know, old quad core with four gig of RAM. So I'm just gonna do it in Linux. See if I can get a, this thing to run Claymore or Phoenix. Alright, so I'm running my first test. I'm running Phoenix Fire for some reason. With the Claymore, it rebooted. I couldn't get it to go. So, yeah, it feels like the fan is not. You can see it kind of shaking around, you know, like it's not balanced. Then, not too impressive. It's running 19.64 mega hash. So, I'd like to get this up to 27. That's the uh, one with the high next memory right there. So. Alright, so I still gotta mess with the, uh, I haven't actually messed with any sort of over overclock setting, so it's only a point eighty five watt, which isn't bad, so um, I don't keep on working on this. Next I gotta test the Samsung one, it seems to have issues, so it gets hot by itself, so um, yeah, I can't find anywhere in the manual what the switch does. I mean, I, I mean, like with my other ones, it's either like an overclock BIOS or a, like a Custom overclock BIOS and like a like a slower like lower wattage BIOS, so dual BIOS. But um, yeah, I can't find the manual for this anymore. Their site sucks. So all right, all right so I mess with the uh, some of the overclock settings and uh, I use some like this some of the presets just to kind of mess with it in uh, Hive OS. Just use like one of the popular presets. Went to RX four seventy. Uh, coin was I chose ETH. And um, it was a uh, clock of 1100. And I did actually, well, so far I'm getting 76 watts and 22.26. But I did actually use my little magnifying glass. I did verify this is high next, and that actually is Samsung. But what's weird though is all the uh, tech power stuff says it's a different brand of memory. So, and it's weird that I guess somewhere halfway in production, they changed uh, memory manufacturers, I guess. So. All right, so this thing's been running all night long. I spent hours tweaking the uh, memory and clock settings and got 30 mega hash. So, printing out a uh, ATX uh, riser plate for this thing right here, so designed that last night. Uh, okay, so 30 mega hash. I was able to get 30 mega hash. And this is the uh, Hynix memory. But let me show you my settings real fast. 30.53. Temp 64, 84 watts. My fan, I have it 35%. My core clock is 1125 megahertz. DPM 5, memory 2000. Reference the AMD tweak setting 30. So, there we go. So, the first card I was able to get to 30 mega hash. That's pretty crazy for a $50 card. So, but this thing actually didn't actually have the BIOS mod, so uh, I downloaded the BIOS, modded the BIOS, and uploaded the BIOS again. And I uh, was able to, that went from about 22 to 26, and then tweaking the, tweaking the memory and 
the other stuff right up to 30. But like I said, I probably went through about 20 crashes and reboots to get to that. So just getting the right settings. But every single card is different though. So um, now that I got this thing running, I'm going to let this thing go. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Samsung card. But the Samsung, because it's different memory, is going to be a, a completely different setting. So i got to figure out the best settings for that card. So, all right, let me let this run for a few more hours and I'm going to swap the cards out here. So as you can see, the uh, RX 470 Samsung 4 gig is in the uh, system. So before I even start the uh, flight sheet and start mining, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the actual uh, BIOS so I can mod it. Because the other card was, even though supposedly it was supposed to be modded, but it wasn't actually modded. So actually, where were we at? So I'll go back here, cards, and then I see the 470. I'm going to download the uh, BIOS. And then I'm going to download all right once it's down downloading then I'll come back and uh, download it to the actual computer all right so I got the flight sheet prepared it's it's mine stock at uh, 26.12 mega hash and I got rid of all my overclock settings to be fair to the other card uh, that way I can actually start off fresh and figure out where you need to go with this thing so um, now I'm actually gonna go back and modify the BIOS the one I just downloaded and we'll try to re-upload it and see if I can get some better hash but this is pretty good I mean this might already be modded already but I mean that's pretty good right out of the box right, so I'll show you how you got to BIOS mod this thing real fast so I'm gonna use Polaris editor I'm gonna run this as administrator yes it's actually on my network drive so give it a second there it goes I'm gonna open the BIOS and I'll go to the desktop where I have my RX 470 folder and I'm going to download the uh, Samsung because I've already done the Hynix. I'm going to click the one timing patch. Yes, found Samsung memory. Uh, looks like it might have already been modded already. Right? Nothing very much changed in here, but we'll do a save as. And I'm going to name this RX 470 uh, Sam. Sung dash modded. All right, so now it's time to upload the BIOS back to the uh, machine here that I modded. So I'm going to go to, well, make sure you detach your flight sheet so you're not mining. And then go back to the uh, farm page, cards, and you want to go to VROM storage. And I want to add the modded VBIOS, and that would be on my desktop. And that's 470. And where is a Samsung modded? I'm going to name it um, RX470. 470. Samsung modded. RX470. Samsung modded. Okay. Upload. All right, now I gotta go back to the cards and click on the 470. Where are you at? Right here. And uh, select the VBIOS. And I'm gonna make sure it reboots and force flash. And this one right here. And it's gonna say preparing. And when it's, once it's done, it will actually reboot the system. I can see it because I'm right in front of it. So as soon as it's done flashing, I'll be back and. Uh, this should reboot. All right, so this thing's going, and I'm gonna show you the final result. At least the fan seems like it's more balanced. The other one seems like it's out of balance. All right, it's going. Yeah, too bad I can't show you this thing. It's This is actually a failed print, but it's actually like an ATX um, mount. So I can actually mount off the, off the workbench here. All right, so let me go back into the uh, computer and I'll show you the uh, final results. Final results. Um, I was getting about uh, about 30. Uh, I'm gonna doing a refresh on it. So about 30.5 to 29 and a half, 29.66. Um, but it kind of fluctuates a little bit back and forth. So about the same settings. I, I noticed that the Samsung is not as forgiving to overclock. So even like when I went to 20.55 on the memory clock, it immediately crashed. Whereas the other one, the Hynix, I could get away with 2100 for a while, then it would crash. 
like it run for a few minutes, then it would crash. But uh, this one seems like it's a way more, uh, you know, unstable at small changes here. So what's funny is they're, they're almost exactly the same. Well, they actually are the exact same uh, clock settings. I even tried like 1150, 1175, 1200, all different core clock settings. And um, the voltage, even the wattage is about the same too, 86 watts. So it's, it's interesting though. So, but yeah, the, the game is to get the most hash with the least amount of power. So yeah, cool. I, I think it's the best value. I mean... 60 mega hash for 100 bucks. You know, my uh, if you look at my other rigs here, um, my my the rack, the, the, the test mine over here, got a couple of invalid shares, but it's not that big deal. Running for so long, yeah, I'm doing about uh, 53 mega hash, and that thing was 400 dollars, 450 plus tax. So we're talking 900 dollars for two cars, and that does about 100 mega hash or 106. So. Um, yeah, much better value now. The DAG file thing, I'm going to work on that and you know, maybe throw an 8-gig card in there. I might not have to even deal that because I'm already running 8-gig cards, but when the DAG file goes past 4-gig, but, you know, I mean, GPU mining is going to be ended pretty soon with Ethereum 2.0 anyway, so let's, uh, I mean, we'll see. I mean, you'll probably mine other coins anyway, so, like I said, I mean, it could happen within two months, a year, we don't know. So when Ethereum 2.0 comes up, you know, Ethereum will be uh, dead, so I'll probably be mining Ravencoin or something else, maybe like a Bitcoin Gold or whatever. So, all right, cool, had fun. Yeah, I, th I think it's the best value right now on the uh, for getting cards for buying Ethereum. All right, cool. <laughs>